The fight seems tough, but we will not give up, God. Hell is coming down our, our lane, but we won't give up, God. We thank you, Father. try to do and what we're going to be praying on is this we have this uh apartment complex that's back here so we're praying for all the young men uh that can come out and just fellowship with the man here uh emerson is my father-in-law and he uh knows how to cook so maybe he can make a dip for them if he <laughs> he is a true chef so maybe he can he can make a nice little dip for the man and help make sure that they little party turn off right we a little concerned me and elder jay ain't got no proposal yet so elder jay said well are they planning i said well we gonna praise god if they to hope that they are so um so yes invite people out for the super bowl party it is gonna be a magnificent time um, and and we're not going to be there unless they invite us. Amen. Amen. Um, but we don't, I, I can't keep my hand out of the full planning, but we don't, we don't press in and press through on that. All right. So we're going to look at G Genesis, the 37th chapter, Genesis 37, beginning at verse 21. Genesis, the 37th chapter, beginning at verse 21. I will be reading out of the Amplified. And if you are able to stand, please stand for the reading of the word. Genesis, the 21st chapter, 
I'm sorry, the 37th chapter beginning at verse 21. If you have it, say amen. 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 If you don't, say hold on. All right. It says, but Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, shed no blood, but cast him into the pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him that he might, de uh, might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had to come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. Verse 25, it says, and they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilgad with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Verse 27, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hands be upon him for he is our brother in our flesh and his, and his brothers listened. Then the Midianites traded passed by so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver and they took and they took Joseph to Egypt. Amen. You may, may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So the title of this message, if you need one, is called The Process from the Pit to the Palace. The Process from the Pit to the Palace. So as you look at uh, the backstory of Joseph, Joseph was this this man called by God, and his father loved him so much. He had favor with his father, who he put together this coat, this tunic that had many colors, and God began to bless him with his dreams. Joseph not really understanding that everybody can't handle the heat that God was placing on him to elevate him, so he began to go to his brothers and say, hey, listen, uh, I had a dream, and the dream was I was the king, and basically I was my servants. <laughs> so, and his brothers was like, no, we don't think so. So God continued to keep giving him these dreams, and Joseph continued to share the dreams with his brothers and even also with his father. And so at one point his father said, basically he was talking crazy, but then he changed the, the conversation to he was paying attention what God was doing in Joseph's life. And so Joseph, being the outcast, continued to serve his father, continued to serve the Lord, uh, whichever way God had called him to. And then he find himself searching for his brothers because he knew that they were not for the right things. And so he goes and search for his brothers and they are plotting against him to say, hey, we need to basically kill him. He trying to steal our shine, talking about we gonna be his servants and that, that's not how this is gonna happen. And so they come up with a plan and the oldest brother, Reuben, says he could not allow that to happen because he had to go back to his father and explain this blood that will be on their hands. And so Joseph comes and as the scripture says that Joseph then finds himself in this pit, they tear him of his tunic and throw him in the pit. And then when the Ishmaelites come, they sell him for 20 shekels. So I did the research to try to see how much that cost. And basically they said back in the day that uh, a slave was sold for 30 shekels. So they, not only did they sell their brother, but they sold him for a discount. Amen. I'm like, Lord Jesus, they sold him this man for a discount. So Joseph finds himself in this pit. In this pit, he's thrown in the pit. He doesn't know what's going on, doesn't understand why it's going on, trying to understand, Father, I'm doing everything that you want me to do, but I'm in this dark pit. And so God began to tell me that we find ourselves in the pit not understanding why we're in the pit. Sometimes we're in the pit because we put ourselves in the pit, and sometimes we're in the pit because other people throw us in the pit. And then we're asking God, how did I get in this pit? And the Father is saying to us, because there's process in the pit before you get to the palace. Amen? Process in the pit before you get to the palace. You may be saying, well, that sounds good and all, but how could the Lord allow this to happen to me? Now, with Joseph, Joseph had his own brothers that threw him in this pit, but the Lord allowed it to happen because he had to begin to get things out of Joseph to help him for the future that God had for him. Joseph was going to the palace, but the Lord knew that in order for him to go to the palace, he could not take pride with him. Joseph was going to the palace and the Lord knew with him going to the palace he had to develop some humility inside of him. And God is saying sometimes when we find
find ourselves in the pit, he's, begin, he's working things out for our good so we can be prepared for the palace. We learned back then that when the prodigal son went to ask for his inheritance, he wasn't ready for that inheritance, and he spent it all and came back saying, Father, give me a, another chance. But before he did that, he was eating with the pigs. He was going to eat what the pigs ate. And God has said that he does not want us to cash in our inheritance before it's our time. So we have to go through the process when we're in the pit. So Joseph is in this pit and he's beginning to learn some things and God is transforming him uh, from these things of pride, like I said, and that he begins to understand what humility is and his relationship with God. God is calling us in a season right now that our relationship with him has to be stronger than what it has been. And so in order for us to understand that we go through these pit circumstances, the pit of being uh, in pain, and God is saying, how do you not know that he's a healer if you've never experienced some pain. If you've never went through no pain, then you don't know that he will come and put purpose in you while you're in that pain and grow you like never before. How do you know God is a, a way maker if you've never been in a situation in a pit where it was so dark and you did not understand that the bills don't add up with the paycheck, but you're in the pit. God is saying he is calling us to a time that we begin to get billed in the pit. So Joseph is in this dark place saying, Father, how did I get in this pit? And God is saying us today because my son and my daughter I am trying to teach you something in this pit you can't go to the palace if you understand the purpose and the process before you get there so he's in the pit God tells him I am with you he says, says that countless throughout Genesis God is saying that he, you will find yourself in difficult times, but you will understand that in those difficult times that he will deliver you in that time. You don't know he's a deliverer if you've never been delivered from something. You don't know he's going to heal you if you've never been broken from something. You don't know about forgiveness unless he's forgiven you of something. God is calling us to a point where we begin to get transformed and, trans, and transferred in our mind in this pit. Many times you find around the holidays that people say, that, you know, it's hard for Susie because she's lost a loved one and every time around this holiday she just gets in this way so don't call her for two or three days. We come up with all these things and God is saying, I'm trying to deliver you from that thing. I'm trying to deliver you from that thing. I'm trying to get you to a point where you will begin to know that there's still purpose in you. No, you should not sit in the house on Christmas because you mad about something that happened 10 years ago or you lost someone 10 years ago and you just still sit in the house like it's a, a funeral time. God is saying, there's still purpose in what's going on inside of you. So I need you to get yourself up out the pit so you can begin to get to the palace. You are birthed with purpose and God is saying in this season I need you to understand your pit process so you can understand the palace process so he gets out of the pit then he goes over to uh he's with Potiphar Potiphar has a a, a he has a a he has a a nice position in the kingdom and so he begins to get grace with Potiphar and so Potiphar says, listen, you can touch everything in here, everything but one thing, and that's my fine wife. Amen. Amen. So he said one thing. So Joseph said, cool, no problem. So Joseph set up his TVs. He did all he needed to do. He gets in there. He's working. He's cooking and doing all his thing. Here come Potiphar's messy wife. So she comes and, yeah, Emerson, here come Potiphar's messy wife. She comes and with her little fine self, and she begins to distract him and say, hey, why, don't we, why can't I have you? And he said, no, why would I do that to, to my boss? Because he's been so good to me. And then she begins to continue to try to entice him, and he turns and rejects her. And what happens? She goes and lies on uh, Joseph and says that he tried to take her uh, into relation. So then he gets put in another pit called jail. And so Joseph finds himself in this pit and he's like, Father, wait a minute. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. This continues to keep happening to me. And God is saying, Joseph, in this pit I'm showing you about integrity. I'm showing you how to allow me to fight your battles for you. Many times we try to fight our own battles. We gonna cuss them out. We gonna cut them off. And we gonna do everything that we have been built up to do. And God is saying, in this season, this is not your battle to fight. This is the battle that I will fight for you. So Joseph finds himself in jail. He's in jail. He's like, how is this going to work itself out? He, then he finds favor with the guard. 
So the guard then allows him to take, take heed and hold over some responsibility in the jail. And God tells him then that I am with you. So God has allowed his gifts to make room for him. Then he finds himself with uh, these two, the baker and the, uh, who was the other one? The baker and the cupbearer. Thank you, Shandon. The baker and the cupbearer who find themselves also in jail. And, and God gives the prophetic word to Joseph. He tells Joseph, this is what's going to happen to these two. And at the appointed time, you're going to reveal the word. So he tells one of them that you are going to be released and God is going to bless you in this season. So stay the course. But don't forget about me, okay? Amen. Then he tells the other one, but your time is up. They're going to hang you and your life is going to be over. So uh, good day. And he moved on with himself. So Joseph finds himself giving this prophetic word. And then the time comes, he's still in jail. He's like, now didn't I give him that prophetic word? And he ain't. I told him not to forget about me. And God is showing Joseph in this dark time how to be patient. We don't never want to be patient about nothing. We go to God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I asked you on Monday, did you, and did you get my prayer on Monday about this situation? And God is saying to you, I need you to have patience. I need you not to be anxious about anything, but through prayer and supplication, trust me in this process. So God had to show Joseph about patience. Patience in prison. Now imagine that. Patience in the prison. So God's not only he's teaching him about patience, he's teaching him about forgiveness, he's teaching him about humility, and he's teaching him how to hold the promise. See, early on in the game, Joseph would kept telling all his business. He kept telling it to the brothers, and it made him so agitated. Have you ever caught yourself telling somebody something about what God is doing in your life, and they get kind of agitated, saying, I don't know how you're going to do this, how you're going to be able to afford that, and how much does it cost to go there? God is saying, some things you just need to keep your mouth shut on. A lot of people put on the Internet that they moving in silence, loud silence, because you keep telling everything. God says silence is silence. you got to move in silence when it comes to certain things. So he can begin to show you some stuff in your season. It's something about that pit when you're in there isolated by yourself, you can hear from God. Because just like Job, God took everything away from Job. His family, his wife, his friends, his food, his all the things that he had. And people kept saying the devil tried Job, but if they read closely, they would understand that the devil had to get permission from God before he could even try Job. Stop giving the devil credit for everything that is going on in your life. There's some things that the Lord is allowing to grow up in you so you can be ready for the palace. God is saying, I'm trying to show you something, daughter. And you keep saying you fighting off demons. No, I'm trying to deliver you in this season. Oh, the Lord, the Lord has forgotten about me. God has said, I am with you. I'm trying to get you to look at this thing in a different way. I'm trying to get you to understand that they're not clapping for you. I'm trying to get you to understand what to keep at the hip. I'm trying to get you to understand when to press in your prayer. I'm trying to get you to understand the calling that is on your life. Joseph had a calling on his life. His daddy knew back then. That's why he gave him that clothes that was had many colors on it. He had colors all over and he, he clothed his son with this thing because he knew his son had a calling on his life. God said he never said it would not be challenging for you. He said he never said that he would not have you in dark times. Because sometimes when the light is off, the light in your spirit glows up. Amen. God is saying when the light is off around you, the light in your spirit will shine through you because you have faith and you have hope like never before. He finds himself in this pit. He finds himself that Potiphar's wife had wrongly accused him. He found himself being imprisoned. He found himself getting favor in the prison. He didn't continue to go to God and say, when you going to let me out, Lord? When you going to let me out? When you going to let me out, Lord? When you going to let me out? He found himself beginning to get strategic in that pit. God 
God wants us to begin to get strategic in the pit. Stop asking God, why has this not happened for you? And say, Father, am I missing the point in my life? Am I missing the process in the pit? God is trying to renew your mind like never before. Because when you get a seat at the king's palace, guess what? Everybody won't be clapping for you. But if your feelings are so hurt, you're going to be distracted when you're sitting in the palace seat, Elder J. You're going to be worried about what they doing over here. And God is saying, I need you to stay focused in this season. You're going to be worried about why they're not clapping over here. And God is saying, I need you to stay focused in this season. See, you know how to stay focused is when you're in the pit. Because when you was in the pit by yourself, you prayed by yourself. When you was in the pit by yourself, you, you gave yourself confidence. When you was in the pit by yourself, you uplifted yourself. There's something about when you're in the pit. Because when you're in the pit, you can pull yourself up. When you're in the pit, you can give yourself something that you need. God is saying, stop trying to deny the pit process in this season. So when you find yourself in a palace, you're not looking for them to clap for you. When you find yourself in a palace, you're not looking for them to validate you. When you find yourself in the palace, you won't be finding yourself arguing with the foot man. When you find yourself in the palace, you know God is getting you ready for the horseman. When you find yourself in the palace, you know he has greater plans for you. When you find yourself in the palace, you know how to walk like integrity and talk like integrity. When you find yourself in the palace, you know how to move like you're in the palace. When you find yourself in the palace, you know how to be nice to the pauper and be nice to the priest. When you find yourself in the palace, you know how to eat fine dining. When you find yourself in that palace, you know how to put on the royal clothes like never before. When you find yourself in a, in a palace, you already filled up for Jesus. When you find yourself in a palace, you're not worrying about those things that they are saying. I'm finding myself in a pit right now. And I'm looking for God to show me in this season. I'm looking for him to show me how faithful he is. God says, Maya, in the palace, I'm going to show you how to praise me. Maya, in the palace, I'm going to show you how to praise me. So when I give you a ministry team, they know how to praise me because you all have been praising me. God is trying to show you something in the pit. And then he will show you something in the palace. He's in this palace. It's the butler and the baker that he had to give a word to. When you find yourself in this, this pit situation, you know how to stay focused. That you're not saying, woe is me. You know how to operate on assignment when you're not saying, Father, I'm in this prison. God is saying, in the prison, I need you to do some work. In a prison, I know that you are not gonna, you are not going to deviate from your assignment. See, a lot of times God gives us few things and we're ready to throw it away. And He said, I can't make you uh, faithful over many things because you won't be faithful over the few things. He was in the prison, still giving a prophetic word. He was in the prison, still serving like never before. He was in the prison and still have hope like never before. God has said, how are you serving in the pit? How are you looking at your situation in the pit? In the pit. Joseph had to be present in the pit. Joseph had to just disconnect himself from distractions in the pit. Joseph had to realize who God was in that pit. God kept whispering to Joseph, for I am with you. God kept whispering to him in dark times, for I am with you. God kept pressing into Joseph that you need to understand when I pull you into this palace and you begin to deal with some giant demons, I am with you. And you find yourself reciting what daddy has said to you. He is with me. I don't care what they say about me. He is with me. I don't care what's going on with my body.
And God says he will give you a key to the palace if you just go through the process. You can't deny the process. So on the day that the butler finally gets his recollection, he tells the king, well, I met somebody a couple of years ago. And I think his name is Joseph. I know he has a prophetic word on him. And so the king ushers for Joseph. Joseph, that was his breaking day. He gets himself ready for this thing with the king to have this conversation. God knew at that point Joseph had been pruned through the process. He knew that Joseph was faithful. He knew that Joseph had humility. He knew that Joseph did not abandon his assignment. He knew that Joseph did not curse him. He knew that Joseph was still relieving. He knew that Joseph was still relying on the promise that God had for him. God gave him those dreams, but you see what happened? He had to go through a process. So he gets released. And he goes to the king and begins to prophesy what, what needs to be prophesied. And then God, then he blesses Joseph. Joseph get blessed again. And then as you continue to read on through the passage, you find that Joseph's little messy brother. See, God says, if you allow him to deal with your enemies, he will begin to deliver them in that process too, amen? amen. So his messy brothers, they, they endure this famine where they don't have any food. So they begin to hustle themselves up because they were hustlers. They begin to hustle themselves up and go to the king palace asking for grains and food. And Joseph with his bad self, with his humility self, he begins to tell them to get as much much as they need. And then he, he found himself behind a curtain where he was trying to hold his emotions from the things that he was experiencing. He wanted to love on his brothers. He wanted to welcome his brothers, but he still had to hold himself in the midst of that thing. See, he knew how to be patient at the appointed time. And God taught him in the pit that you gotta be patient until I tell you to go. So then his brothers come back and Joseph began to set a table for his brothers. See, you know God God has worked on you when you love in a different way. You know God has worked on you when you forgive in a different way. You know God has been with you when your light shines a little different way. So Joseph set this table before his brothers. He put all the fine dining out on the table. He put all the oils out on the table and he began to serve his brothers like never before. And then he began to cry like never before and had to let his brothers know, I am your brother. I my brother's keeper. So much you sold me into slavery, but I am here with you all. And so he blesses his brother and blesses his whole family. And his dear father finds out that he's not dead. So God tells us in this story, what are you doing in your pit that's preventing you from the palace? You have not gotten that promotion yet because you're not ready for the palace. You have not gotten that new that new job, that, that new vehicle. You have not gotten that new spiritual gift yet because you don't know how to handle it in the pit. God has said he's trying to yearn and he's trying to process us in this pit like never before. He wants to shed some things off of you like never before. You keep saying you're going to forgive and you ain't forgave them yet. You keep saying you're going to be delivered and you ain't been delivered yet. God is saying I'm trying to show you something in this pit because when you get to the palace I'm going to need those characteristic traits to come and show up for you because I'm going to bring some of your enemies to your table and I want you to feed them like never before. I'm going to bring some of your enemies to your table and I'm going to need you to clothe them like never before. I'm going to need you to take off your fine garment and put it on your enemy. I'm going to need you to put your fine garment on your enemy and then I'm going to need you to pray for your enemy like never before but you won't experience that thing if you ain't been in that pit. So God is trying to show you in this process what it looks like for you. Stop trying to rush the process in the pit. He worked on Joseph. So God is saying in this season, he is working on us. He said in this season that the dreams he has given you, write them on down. Write those things down that he is calling you forth to in this season. God is saying, then hold that thing to your head. He don't need you to make an announcement on Facebook. Talking about the Lord is doing some mighty things in my life. God says you don't even understand the full plan to know what the plan is. I need you to learn how to keep a secret between me and you. I need you to understand how to keep confidentiality between me and you. You can't let everybody know what I'm doing in your life because they don't understand 
and the oil that's on your life. Learn confidentiality between you and God. That means you have a conversation with him, Carrera, and you tell him your deepest things, and then he begins to give you hope and promise and truth, and then you're able to carry that thing with you like never before. And then when the time comes and your elevation comes, you are prepared for anything that comes your way. You know how to call on the Heavenly Father. You know how to deal with the distraction. You know how to pray against the devil. You know how to move like never before. You won't allow the distractions of your spouse. You won't allow the distractions of your children. You won't allow the distractions of your health to get in the way of the palace. You know how to move that thing out of the way. You know how to press into your prayer like never before. God is calling you in this season to move like never before. So how would you respond in the palace? How do you respond in the palace? God is calling you to respond. We are in the last couple of weeks of December. And we are transitioning into 2020. And God is saying that you're going to experience 2020 a little bit differently if you move differently. You are going to experience 2020 a little bit differently if you are obedient a little bit differently. You are going to experience a little bit differently, Elder J, if you are committed to your process. You're going to experience when you learn how to keep confidentiality what he's doing in your life. You don't have to tell everybody that you're fasting. There's something that you're going to get in that confidentiality partnership with God. God is trying to show you something. He's trying to strip you of some things that are not of him. God says there's something that happens when you keep the confidentiality with him. When you are able to talk to him about everything. When you are able to reveal yourself with him like never before. So write down your dreams. Number two. Ask God what pit are you in? Are you in the pit that's in your marketplace? Are you in the pit in your, your marriage, your relationship? Are you in the pit with your children? Are you in the pit with your friendships? Are you in the pit with your faith? You keep talking about you got faith, but it don't show. Are you, are, are you in the pit when it comes to knowing the word? When the last time you studied the word? What kind of pit process are you in? And then ask God, I, Father, am I ready for the palace? Do I have to walk for the palace? Do I know how to walk like a king and a queen in the palace? Do I know how to be strategic in this palace? God wants to know what do you know so he can show you what he knows. Then the, then the last thing is, Stefan, can you play me some soft music? The last thing is hold on to those things that God is showing you. God wants you to pray to him in your own way. Everything that we've been taught and everything that we have been told may not work for you in this season. You know, maybe you don't understand your speaking in tongue. Just speak to him in English. He trying to get your English right before he can get your tongue right. Amen. <laughs> Talk about get in the cat like get out of the Honda. No. How do you say hello to God in English before you can talk to him in tongue? God says he's trying to teach you in English. Bless God. So be honest with the Lord. 2020 will be your year if you allow your mind to go where God is going. 2020 will be your year if you invest in yourself like never before. Stop, keep, stop saying you got to buy your kids this and that. God is calling you to invest and take care of yourself in 2020. Because Dylan knows I don't have a problem with investing in myself. <laughs> Let's go for that. <laughs> so invest in yourself. Yes. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear God for loving us like never before. God, we thank you that you're showing us how to be in the pit, Father. Yeah. Father, we want to endure everything that you have for us. We want to be good stewards over the assignments that you have placed before us. 
God, we thank you that we will have a strong prayer life with you, God. We thank you, God, that you're showing us how to keep confidentiality with you, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing in our lives. God, we thank you that you will stretch your covering to our children and our grandchildren. We thank you, dear God, that you will stretch your covering to our co-workers. We thank you, dear God, that you will stretch your covering over our mind. Show us how to manage our mind like never before. Show us how to trust you when you say yes. Show us how to trust you when you say it is so. Show us, God, how to trust you when you say you are with us. So, God, show us in this season, Father, how to be more like you. And, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, dear God, when our time is for the palace, that, Father, we move in that thing like never before. We allow our gifts to make room for us, Father. We thank you that, dear God, that we understand that we are more than, Father. We can do all that you have called us to do. God, we thank you that, Father, when we get to the palace, we know everything belongs to us as it does in the kingdom, Father. We will not move like toppers, God, but we will let move like priests, Father. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, have your way today, God. Oh, Father, have your way. We repent for complaining in the pit, Father. We repent, Father, for not trusting you in the pit process. So, God, have your way today, God. Who wouldn't serve a God like you, Father? Who wouldn't serve a God that would keep us covered in the pit? Yes, God. Hey, we bless your name. Healer. Provide. Sustain. Hey, give him a little tap. Hey. Yes. We gonna praise him in advance for our praise team. There you go, mother. Go ahead. Give him a little show. Hey. Yeah. 